Hello, welcome back to a new video of the series. In today's video, we'll be talking about a really, really, really interesting little induction lamp. It's from the Soviet photon machine made by the Melt factory in somewhere in the USSR. I don't really know, but it's one of the lamps I've fascinated quite the most with. A cute little quartz glass bulb with a tiny little drop of mercury. You can see how small the little droplet is, tiny. And you can see there's some labeling on top and a pinched off seal here. The glass is probably filled with xenon as the filler glass, a gas. Xenon is one of the noble gas has the highest atomic mass, probably is the most efficient at transferring energy into the mercury atom. This lamp is probably powered only up to 1 watt, but I can simply drive up to 20 watts if I really want to. And because it's made of really, really pure quartz, it allows the 254 nanometers UV to escape, as well as like a 183 nanometer, I'm not really sure, but it's really deep UV. That type of UV can basically rip oxygen atom apart, that dioxygen into ozone. The chemical reaction is pretty fascinating there. I could probably write in it down. So you have O2. And one of them will be ripped apart and another one will be turned into ozone. So therefore we'll have two. Let's see. Two ozone, then one becomes a diatom. So we'll say three goes to O3. So we if we balance, there will be 2 over O to balance the equation. As the oxygen and oxygen double bond can be ripped apart by UV photon energy if it's sufficient to break this bond. And this is the main way how Earth produces ozone through the sun. Yep, sun does produce ultraviolet. Because this lamp, it works as discharge, also produces high intensive UV. I cannot put my finger onto the bulb, let it run, or else I'm gonna get really bad UV burn on my fingers. So I've created a tiny little lamp holder. <laughs> In fact, this tiny little bulb does look like a little Christmas bubble ornament, if you put a little Christmas cap on. So now, here is the main resonator coil, if I just lower it further. You can see here. The resonator coil is just made of really simply coils of copper wire and that is that is it, nothing too special. And I've also got myself a borosilicate glass tube or probably like a glass bottle or something. But this way it will shield me from the harmful UV when the lamp produces. And I need to lower the lamp to the correct position in order for it to work properly. And turn on the oscillator. Uh -oh. The oscillator works at a really, really particular frequency, or both are below the frequency, it does not work properly. So I have to also tune the bias of the capacitor as well, in order to make sure it does run correctly. Now it's running into an inductive discharge. Inside this cute little quartz bowl, there's actually a toroidal discharge. It looks like in a shape of a bow, but actually it's a torus. Here we can see it's really intense, and a lot of ozone is also produced at the same time. If I focused well onto the bow, have I? Yep. So, the electrical energy is turned into magnetic field and coupled back into the glass. And inside the glass, there will be a plasma. Plasma acts as the secondary of the coil. Anyway, I shouldn't let it run too long. 
Yeah, in theory, I can let it, if I tune the power well and make sure the oscillator does not burn out, I can let it run for probably a whole year without turning it off, as there's no electrode to wear off at all. Because the lamp, and here we can see it's the Faraday law of electromagnetic induction. Just focus well. We have the number of turns, which is represented here, and changing few flux over changing time. Basically, the time will be dependent on the switching frequency. Flux will also be determined by also the current as well and the diameter of the copper winding, which will result in inducing EMF. This EMF can also be induced inside the glass as the electric field, but in a circular shape. The circular shape, when it's reached at a certain potential threshold, a electrical discharge breakdown will occur inside the lamp. And it's also represented by the LCR series equation. If any of you want to ask about the oscillator and the circuit diagram, and any of you will try to ask me under the description, I will tell you, no, I'm not going to release it, simply because I haven't tuned the circuits well, like, refine the circuit well enough that I'm comfortable to publish it out. So therefore, probably in the very future, I might publish a better circuit diagram. But for right now, it's just the experimentation period. Of course, you can drive the circuit with a 2 meters band. No, it's probably like a 60 meters or like an 80 meters band HF transceiver. Like you get yourself like a 80 watts and tune the power down like to 5 watts. So at the infinite VSWR, in theory, it shouldn't hurt your final output amplifier transistor. Since the RF transistor is extremely sensitive to RF mismatch, I would suggest you use the vacuum tube version. But anyway, thanks for watching.